Let's bring in one of the people that report, CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt. The ADL is organizing a march in Washington in support of Israel, set to take place on Tuesday. Also with his Rabbi Matthew Gewertz. Last week, he returned from a trip to Israel, where he met with victims of October 7th terror attacks and family members of hostages uh, being held by Hamas. Jonathan, let's start with you. Um, obviously, I've heard you, Reverend Sharpton, uh, talk about how how uh, discrimination, threats against anybody uh, in, in America, uh, obviously contemptible, whether it's Muslim Americans uh, or Israeli uh, or, or Jewish Americans. Um, but a number just keeps sticking in my head, and that is uh, FBI Director Ray saying that Jews make up 2% of the population, 60% of the hate crimes last year directed towards Jews. I must tell you, the more time I spend on college campuses, the more time I talk to kids going to college campuses, I have, uh, I have, I have, we, me and I have children in college, uh, the more absolutely shocked, shocked I am by the high levels of anti-Semitism uh, that, that we're experiencing right now. More reports of it coming from MIT. We've seen what's happened at Harvard. We've seen what's happened at Penn. We've seen what's happened across the country. What, what is going on? Yeah, I mean, it is indeed shocking, it is stunning, and it is sickening. Joe, I appreciate you calling attention to this because it is a nightmare for these Jewish students. I mean, since I was last on your show at MIT, Jewish students are being physically prevented from going to class. Jewish Ooh. staff members at MIT are being harassed in their offices. Their classes are being interrupted. At Yale, there have been multiple protests with hundreds of students yelling resistance is justified. This to a Jewish community that had its women raped, its babies killed by people claiming to be quote unquote doing resistance. At Penn, there were death threats this week against the Hillel. At UCLA yesterday, a place where I used to teach, a place where my wife graduated from, mass students violently destroyed a pinata with the face of the Jewish leader on it. Look, I've been on your show for years. Violent, dehumanizing language leads to violent, dehumanizing actions. And so I've got to say, Joe, earlier this week, ADL, in partnership with Hillel and the Brandeis Center, we launched a legal call in line for college students. If they are experiencing discrimination or hate, and in just four days, we've had over 90 cases submitted to us. And we've trained hundreds of lawyers. But, so but, Joe, but, but, let, 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 let me ask you, though. I, I, yeah. Great idea. Great idea. I just, I, you've got to explain something to me. Okay. Um, I, 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 why is it that administrators... Presidents, I, and I'm looking at MIT right now based on what you've yeah. told me, but I can look at other colleges too. Um, colleges, I, again, I, some of the most elite colleges in, in, in the country. Uh, Jewish students are, uh, and I said this earlier, are not only facing harassment, students that refuse to take an extreme position, listen to me here, on elite college campuses, students that refuse to take an extreme position against Jews are actually harassed with threats of cancellation. That's right. Well, I, I just, right. I, where, I, 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 it, it makes me so angry. I want to know where the college presidents are. I want to know where the administrators are because they sure as hell stepped in rightly after George Floyd's death. They rightly step in after after other extreme actions take place. They rightly step in, uh, and I hope like hell if 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 Muslims were be, uh, facing violence day in and day out on of college course. campuses, I would hope like hell they would do it. We anybody that's watched this show for 16 years heard me speak out time and time again whenever there's a hint of any discrimination against Muslim Americans. Uh, uh, some of the just uh, so. I want to know, and let's just say it like it is, why, 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 why on our most elite college campuses are Jews held to a far lower standard and Jewish kids held to a far lower standard than anybody else? Because I, I, I thought 
for the past 20 years, college administrators were trying to create, quote, safe spaces for anybody uh, like yeah. that wanted to be bubble wrapped. I am so sick of the safe spaces conversation. Don't talk to me about safe spaces when your campuses are literally unsafe. These college administrators, and you know, it's the oppression Olympics, Joe. It's the oppression Olympics where you either play oppressor or oppressed. And in this victimology madness, Jews are somehow put at the bottom. But here's the thing, Joe, I am so tired of the cowardice. I am so tired of the weakness. So university presence, I am looking right at you. If you violate Title VI, and you make your students unsafe, ADL is coming for you. If you create environments where Jewish students are hostile, are being harassed, being targeted, I got news for you. You may have a moral weakness, but you also have a fiduciary responsibility to protect your institutions. And look, whether you're gonna lose tens of millions of donor dollars, and you will, or you lose hundreds of millions in federal funding because you lose Title VI, and you will. We are coming for you because I'm tired of waiting, Joe. I'm tired of waiting for them to protect my Jewish kids in school. So I'm going to protect them with the full force of the law. Well, I mean, they need to and they haven't. Uh, Rabbi, I want to get to you. Uh, you, you, uh, you. You have just come back from Israel. Uh, Tom Friedman, I thought, had a great column this past week talking about how Israel um, uh, he doesn't recognize the Israel that he's in now. And one of the more heartbreaking things is just how complicated the situation is. You have Hamas, the Hamas terrorists, of course, uh, who have started all this and, 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 and blown things apart. At the same time, Tom talks about what's happening on the West Bank uh, and uh, radical settlers who are doing things that are blowing apart the opportunity for a two-state solution. So Jews and Palestinians one day can live together in safety, in peace, in dignity. It seems right now we're farther and farther away from I had, I had I had one of my children last night when I talked about two-state solution. One of my children said to me last night, he said, Dad, that's just not possible anymore, is it? I said, we have no choice. We have no choice. And yet, it does seem farther away now, not just because of the terror strikes from Hamas, but because of what's happening in the West Bank. I could just tell you, Joe, that I have uh, been to Israel 35 times in my life, and I've never experienced it like this. It is as dire as you think. It is as, as existential as you think. It is as dreadful as you think. And in some uh, counterintuitive way, it is uh, more hopeful than you might think. Uh, the streets are full of murmur, not Israeli lively banter. Uh, there's no one between 18 and 40 years old in the street because they're all either up north or down south uh, fighting or getting ready to fight. And uh, there's a sense of, of um, both confidence and uh, focus in people's eyes, but also a sense of fear. You know, this show and other shows have done incredible work in reporting back what's going on there. But when you hear stories firsthand, it just sears the soul. Parents and grandparents who've said, I came to this country to build it, to make sure that never again would be able to be perpetuated, but again happened just a month ago. And that is crystal clear there right now. Rabbi, you, you, when you come on, you, 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 you bring hope uh, uh, to, to our viewers, even in the most uncertain of times. Let me ask you, um, what hope is there? long term, as we look over the horizon uh, for, I, I'll say it again, and I'm going to keep saying it, even though radicals on both sides don't want it to be said, a two-state solution where Israelis can live safely in their homes, where Palestinians can live safely with dignity. <clears throat> give us hope that we can get there someday soon. Uh, I'm going to give you hope uh, sort of in a backwards way. Uh, one of the people we met with was a woman who lost two sons, two sons on that day of October 7th. And she's there with sort of this steadfast voice talking to us and said, you know what I decided to do? Instead of digging two graves, I, dig, I dug one because I wanted them buried together. I wanted them holding hand to hand to show in Hebrew what's called achdut, which means unity. And somehow these boys are not going to die in vain because we as a Jewish people are going to stand together. And then she looked at me and she said, you no longer have the luxury 
of polarization in your country. You cannot hate each other while we all need each other, because my boys are not going to die in vain. So if you think back in America, you're going to talk about your party is less anti-Semitic than yours is, or yours is more in favor than the, of, the, of the Jewish state than the other one is, then you are t turning your gaze from what's most important. And if you don't my, want my, my, my voice to die in vain, then somehow you have to come together, or, she said, you will somehow add to the extermination of the Jewish people. So with those boys not dying in vain, or any boys and girls dying in vain, we have to come together in ways that we never have before. Rabbi Matthew Gewertz and CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, thank you both so much. Uh, and Jonathan, I'll see you next Friday.